Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode number 92, featuring Mail Order Monsters. One of the greatest games for the Commodore 64 and Atari 8-bit platforms. Now this is a game that was published in 1985 for the Atari 8-bit and Commodore 64 computers. And I've got a, I've got a copy of it right here. Uh, courtesy of my friend Al, whose birthday was uh, last, uh, this, well, this weekend. And he wanted me to cover this game. And as you can see, as always, they've done a great job with the packaging. Uh, they call this the album cover packaging because it's about the same uh, size, I guess, as a, a phonograph record album would have been. It was uh, designed by Paul Reich III. And if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he did um, Archon, uh, which we covered back in episode 43. And then uh, later on with Fred Ford, he did a Star Control, uh, which we covered in episode 24. He's a really great guy, uh, inventive, creative. I didn't know this, but apparently he got his start working at TSR at the early age of 19. He was there designing uh, AD&D or D&D uh, campaign modules. And uh, he actually created his own race, the Thrykeen uh, Insectoid race. So a little factoid there about Paul Reich. You can trot that out at your next party. Um, now, Evan and Nikki Robinson, uh, they are, as a matter of fact, a uh, husband and wife team. I finally was able to, <laughs> to confirm that. Uh, Nikki, I wasn't able to find out anything about Evan, really. Uh, but Nikki, uh, she's done a lot of work for trying to promote women in gaming, uh, especially uh, women to have careers in games. And she was spent some time at 3DO as a games programmer. Now, anyway, I've been trying forever to get in touch with Paul Reich uh, <laughs> and, and even uh, Evan and Nikki uh, Robinson would be great to, to uh, interview. So if you know them, know how I can reach them, please let me know. So anyway, we've got a lot to cover here, so without even further ado, here is Mail Order Monsters. And here we go with Mail Order Monsters. Now as the name implies, uh, the theme here is that you have ordered a monster, you can equip them, you can uh, modify their stats, you can even buy special body parts uh, for them. It's uh, some pretty wild stuff. Uh, the bulk of the game will be um, an Archon-style uh, 101 monster e monster slugfest, uh, but there's a lot more subtle nuances, of course, that weren't in Archon. Uh, for instance, you have three different battle modes. Uh, we're going to we're watching uh, the demo here, and they're going to start off with the flag collection. Now, the rules of this, as you'll see, there are seven flags randomly scattered around a battlefield. You have to choose the flags. You have to find, a, you have to kept, uh, capture the flags in the right order. So you have to figure out where number one is, number two is, and so on. And uh, capture the flag means you touch the flag and then either defeat the guardian or run away from the guardian. Uh, fortunately, there's a bit of a, a loophole here. And if you let the computer go to the flags, you can weaken him using the guardians. I get him down low enough, and then you can just attack him directly. Which is a strategy that, as I understand, almost everybody uses. <laughs> if you, as this computer is a real, uh, a real pain in the butt to beat, especially when you're just starting out. Now there's a little trick I was reading about in a game fact. It says that uh, the computer will chase down the guard at first, but should the computer touch the flag, uh, he'll start running away. Now if you notice the uh, the guard's bullets have a little bit, they're a little bit thicker than what he's able to throw at you, so apparently if you <laughs> position yourself just right, uh, he'll never be able to beat you. Here, I'll see if I can pull it off. So you let him touch the flag, he starts to run, and then what you want to do is get sort of a, uh, just where he can't hit you. You want to stay close to him, don't let him get away. Now he won't fire at you if you can get yourself just in the right position, he'll just keep running and then you wait for your uh, weapon there to charge up and then you can pop him with it. Even uh, even like this, it's uh, pretty difficult. Uh, thank God there's this little <laughs> little glitch in the game, otherwise I don't know how anybody would manage uh, to beat this computer. Now the combat is, I suppose, pretty fun, but I think what most of us would enjoy about this game is uh, the tournaments because you can, after you uh, win some victories, you can graft on some improvements. Uh, you start off by selecting uh, one of these 12 uh, basic monsters. The different monsters will have different starting stats, uh, different abilities. One of the major things about this game uh, is speed. Obviously, if, the, if your opponent is faster than you, you'll have a really tough time. And also, mind, 
uh, affects how quickly you can reload your weapon, which is another big thing. I guess the two, uh, you need to be able to get around, but also you don't want to get crippled with a really slow reloading time. Uh, the game is hard enough as it is. And also, most players will probably want to avoid the uh, melee stuff and get a, a ranged weapon as soon as possible because it's just <laughs> really brutal, uh, the melee stuff, just like it was in Archon. Uh, now, here are some of the different weapons I can buy, and a lot of cool stuff. Uh, I think, you know, the replay value is, is so high with this because you can't, uh, there's a limit on how many things you can put on a monster. So you'll always want to be coming back here, uh, making new monsters, trying out new weapons and uh, subsequent strategies. Uh, some of these uh, weapons will require rounds. Uh, the uh, physical attacks will require food. Then you've got energy weapons. A lot of uh, variety here. A lot of different ways to play. Or you can uh, later on uh, upgrade your monsters. Uh, you can heal them, add new abilities. So just a lot of ways uh, to do this. My, my guess is you'll be doing this uh, flag capture routine uh, dozens of times until you have enough money to get a really good monster going. All right, so moving on, let's take a look at the Atari 8-bit version. This is running on an, an Atari 800 emulator. Apparently this version was written by one Henry S. Bowley, or possibly Bowley. I'm uh, not quite sure how to pronounce that. Uh, but this, this version looks really good. It's a good port. Uh, the graphics uh, look pretty good. They've actually implemented some of the cool uh, Atari 8-bit specific uh, graphical routines into this, that strange sort of color cycling. Um, now this little scene right here, I wanted to, to mention, doesn't this seem mule-like? I think it must be the sound effects, but I was reminded of mule. Also should mention that... Uh, I, you have three different modes of play. You have beginner mode, which sets you up with a pre-built creature. You have this intermediate mode that gives you some money and lets you buy a creature and uh, buy some pretty cool weapons and things, so it's a little more flexible. Uh, the only downside to uh, these two modes is that you don't get to keep your monster after the battle. Uh, the tournament lets you do that, but they also start you off with about half the money, so it'll be very difficult to get started. But I'm just amazed really, at the raw number of choices and options for customizing your monsters. Uh, they did a really good job. You get a really good variety. Uh, take a look here at these uh, weapons that you can choose from. Sword, E-Mace, <laughs> Gas Gun. Uh, these will actually use different types of uh, ammunition as well. Uh, some require energy. Uh, some use um, uh, just rounds. And then the physically the physical weapons require food. Uh, so quite a few um, things to consider. Um, also, you have all these other items you can buy. Med kits, uh, helmets. Uh, the Star Java gives you a bit of a speed boost. You even have a jet pack there. A lot of options. I mean, it would take a long time to really uh, go through all the possibilities here. You know, as you'll notice, there are some slight differences between that Commodore version. Uh, the colors are different, of course, but... Uh, also, instead of those sort of squares, now we have these crosshairs. Uh, but the battle feels pretty similar. I'm not really an expert at these things, but <laughs> it's, it was just as hard uh, to me as the Commodore version was. You know, I, I've never actually played this game with a human opponent. I, I imagine it must get pretty intense, especially if you've both uh, invested quite a bit of uh, TLC into your monsters. You can actually save the game to different discs and even put a password on your monsters. So I guess the idea was you would show up at your friend's house, uh, you'd both have copies of this game, and uh, you just load your character into it and you could battle it out. It's a pretty, pretty cool concept. It's a shame I never got to experience that. If you did, though, I'd like to hear your stories. One last thing I thought you might like to see is the Atari 8-Bits Victory, or in my case, Defeat screen. Uh, you can see that cool, uh, colorful uh, color cycling thing there in the middle. I'm sure some of you Atari guys can tell me what, what that effect is called. It definitely looks cool. Like the little Zeppelin that goes by saying, Raw, you know, <laughs> imagine a, a couple of 8 or 8 or 9 year olds uh, battling it out, and uh, this screen must have been seen with, the, <laughs> with great consternation uh, by many a, many a lad. Just a quick comparison here. Here's the Commodore 64 one. And you can see that uh, thing in the middle is just blinking. Uh, not nearly as impressive as the Henry Bowley's or Bowley's work on the Atari version. 
Still get the little Zeppelin though. I feel very edified now. You know, you guys nowadays talk about your achievement systems and all that, but I gotta tell you, man, I've got a giant Zeppelin with the word RAW printed on it going across the screen. All in my honor. And that's an achievement. And that's gonna wrap it up for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next time, hopefully, with an interview. I've got a few lined up. I'm, I think I'm getting pretty close to uh, scheduling one with Augustine Chords. Uh, he's the guy that did Scratches, one of the scariest and, and one of my favorite ad modern adventure games, so stay tuned for that. also want to thank Game Banshee and RPG Codex, who have been uh, helping me to promote the show. Uh, you should definitely check those sites out if you like computer role-playing games, which I think it's probably safe to assume you do if you like this channel. Also, Jay Barnson of uh, Tales of the Rampant Coyote, one of the best bloggers out there covering RPG uh, design, the classics, the history. If you haven't seen his site, I highly recommend it. I'll post a link to all those sites in the show notes. Also, of course, if you'd like to donate to the Drinking Horn Fund, um, I'll post a link to my PayPal site. Now, you can donate a one-time uh, payment, or you can set up a subscription service to keep me well-stocked with the logger. As a matter of fact, this week I'll be toasting you with a Bell's Two-Hearted Ale. Uh, this beer comes very highly recommended. I'm looking forward to that. And I'll be thinking of you as uh, you drink one of those uh, after the show. Now, I thought I would leave you with a quotation, but I'm going to have to explain a little bit about uh, this quotation. Uh, so I was looking for a quote about monsters, and I came across a quote from Lala Ward, a.k.a. Sarah Ward. And now she played uh, Romana, one of two actresses actually, who played Romana in the classic uh, TV show Doctor Who, uh, which is one of my uh, favorites of all time. Um, anyway, I thought I had to explain that for you to get the quotation. But anyway, her qu <laughs> now the quotation is, um, don't ask me who my favorite monster was, because I'm sick of saying Tom Baker. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week.